maybe make some mistakes that it becomes hard to believe in. I don't think stopping for six months does anything. In fact, I think uh, Elon is mistaken. I think we should keep going forward. I, I don't think that we're going to see more chaos from it. I think we're going to see more complexity. Always comes from the outside. It's not Facebook or Google. The next one is not going to come from Microsoft or Baidu. 大家好，我是思琪。今天我们请到了被誉为互联网著名预言家的凯文·凯利。究竟未来 AI 将如何颠覆人们的生活？我们请凯文·凯利谈一谈他新的洞见。Are you aware that many Chinese internet companies claim to have been inspired by your book Out of Control? So they called you the predictor and the prefect of Chinese internet. How do you feel about that? So I don't really think of myself as a futurist. I think of myself as someone who is trying to predict the present, right now. That if we can kind of figure out what's going on right now, then we can think about the future. So I spend a lot of my time trying to figure out what's happening with AI, what's happening with VR, what's happening with electric vehicles. Because if we can see what's happening now, then thinking about the future is easier. Please tell us some changes AI made in your own life and、yes. work. So I try to post one AI picture, a picture that I co-create with AI every day. So I use the engines like、uh, Midjourney or Dali. Textually, I use the Chat GPT to do all kinds of things, from summarizing to writing. Outlines to doing a bullet points to suggesting new ideas. I think of it as a personal intern. This intern that I have, it's on 24 hours a day. They never get tired. They're、yeah. always helping. I can't use the material they create by itself. I always have to check it, or I have to rewrite it, or I have to improve it. In your opinion, which area do you think AI will accelerate significant breakthrough in the next、yeah. stage? What we're seeing, the main use of AI so far, where it has transformed most, is in programming. So every programmer in Silicon Valley is using AI to help it program. That's the best and the most powerful use so far is programming. They used to have to look up code in libraries or Google it, but now they ask Chat GPT or Copilot or any others to help them write code, and they can accelerate 50% faster, 60%. Very, very powerful. The second one is in、um, healthcare, doctors, and part of it is、um, so far. Is doctors using chat to help them understand the literature better than they could by themselves? It's very hard to keep track of all the medical innovations and the recent papers. So they can use the chat to ask about what about this disease? What's new there? Or what's what? What are the different pros and cons of using this kind of procedure? So it so the doctors are using it for their own education, their daily education. And the second way they are using it is in writing up the reports. Doctors, like teachers, spend a lot of time if they're in a clinic,、um, summarizing the visit of the patient and making up the notes. It's very time-consuming. The AI can watch their conversation and write up the notes for them. So that's very, very powerful. Many companies, as I know, they are eager to introduce and upgrade AI system to、yeah. improve efficiency. Right. So, if AI progresses to a more advanced level, what's the future relationship between human and AI? Which jobs will be taken over quickly? Yeah, I, I think one of the things I would say, as a general rule, is that machines do efficiency very well, and humans do not do efficiency. We Like jobs that are inefficient, we like tasks that are inefficient. What we're doing right now is not very efficient. We're not ranking how many questions per hour. We're not trying to increase that. How many words per minute I'm speaking? No, no, no. 
this is a very inefficient process. That's good, that's what we like. Art is very inefficient. Nobody was counting how many paintings per hour Picasso made. Uh, music is inefficient. But so is science. Science and innovation are inefficient because you have so many mistakes and so many trials that, that don't work and so many experiments that don't work. If you were really efficient, you would only do experiments that worked. So I think what was happening is that we humans are going to the jobs and the tasks that are inefficient. Anything that has efficiency, we give to the AIs and the robots. They like efficiency. We don't. And if we have a job where efficiency starts to matter, then we give it to the AI and the robots. But we focus too much time on efficiency yeah. because many companies are efficiency driven. Right, and those, those are the jobs that will go to the AIs. So for those people who are in their mid-career, yeah. they are more familiar with the efficiency, but they have to make a change. They are not yeah, they, they, yeah, they will. I think, for, first of all, the AI is going to take five to ten years or more to change. This is not going to happen fast. You can't just put in an AI into a company and replace a human with an AI. You need other things. It's like when we went into the Industrial Revolution and we brought electric motors, motors into factories or homes. They just didn't replace a person. You had to make an infrastructure. You had to change the building. You had to change the operation of the company to absorb the machines. And the same thing will be with AI. You can't just take a people and replace them with an AI. You need to change the shape of the organization. You need to change the shape of the work. So that takes time. That takes five years, 10 years. So I think it's going to be a whole generation before people are going to be replaced by AI. It's not going to happen fast. The bad thing is many people are trained to do some repetitive work. Yes. That's uh, very sad. Yeah, and they have to be retrained to do, ideally, to do work that's not repetitive. Right now it's cheaper to hire someone on a factory than to build a robot or AI. I think maybe in 10 years, it will be cheaper to have an AI and robot than to hire the person. Hi. That's what we would like. Right now, the person is acting like a robot because they're being efficient. Well, humans are not very efficient. We're not good at that. We shouldn't be really doing that. Um, so I think over 10 years, those jobs would be replaced by more automation. No, I think, as I said earlier, it will liberate humans from doing jobs that they don't really want to do. They only do it because they're getting paid. If they weren't getting paid, they wouldn't do it. We want humans to do jobs that they would do even if they weren't being paid. The goal is to ha have AI help us so that the job we were doing is not just for money, it's for other reasons. Could you imagine if, like, some people wonder if AI is a more destructive power mm, yeah. than atomic bomb? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's not true because the people who have that view overestimate intelligence. They overrate intelligence. So they think that if you have a black box that has super IQ, that it will take over the world. But, but, but you need more than just intelligence. It's like if you take Einstein and a tiger. Einstein's a lot smarter than the tiger. You put them in a cage. Who wins? Who lives? Not the smartest person. You need other things to make things happen in the real world. We have to remember that the intelligence is not the most powerful thing. I think imagination is more powerful than intelligence. I think enthusiasm is worth more than uh, IQ when you're trying to hire someone. So I think there's lots of other things that are just as important as intelligence. So even though we make intelligence cheap with AI, just having intelligence alone is not enough to really take over the world. I think the most likely crisis for AI is for us not being able to believe them. They m maybe make some mistakes 
that it becomes hard to believe in. And so they have to earn our trust again. I think we're on the way, I think that's very, um, I think we're not going to make that happen. I, I think we're going to avoid that by working to devise ways that we can believe AI. It requires, it's a very complicated solution, it requires hardware and software and regulation, but we can, we can make a world where we can believe the AIs, but it's going to be difficult. Will AI have their own intelligence? Well, yes, they will, for sure. But it's an alien intelligence. It's not like humans. They think differently than we do. When they make the art, it's weird. It's alien. They can, they can imitate a average human, but their own ideas are very strange. So I think of them as artificial aliens, like Spock on Star Trek or E.T. They're they could be very smart, they could be conscious, but they, they're, they're different. AI will have self-consciousness. Consciousness is not binary. It's not like you have it or you don't. You have amounts. You can have a little bit. So we'll have different kinds of consciousness. I, I don't think that we're going to see more chaos from it. I think we're going to see more complexity. Things will be more complicated. The law will be more complicated. Uh -huh. The world will be more complicated. But I don't necessarily mean that it has more chaos. I see. I'm just curious if human depend on AI more frequently, yeah. who will be the main decision maker for some important issues like wars, public policy making, or even sure. crucial personal choices? Yeah. So what we find so far is that the best decisions are made as a team of AI plus a human. So that they're, they're kind of like a team together. So the, AI, the human itself is often doesn't know enough. It's limited in what we understand. The AI knows all things, but doesn't have the same kind of judgment. So the two of them together is a really good combination. So I think what we're going to see is more and more decisions made with AI plus humans together. So it depends on how well a human works yes. with AI. And I think you're going to be in the future, you're going to be paid by how well you work with AIs. In your resume, you're going to have works well with AI, knows how to speak AI, knows how to talk to AI. That will become very, very important. Great. I will do next, as you say, <laughs> in my resume. If you imagine how technology will change our living situations in the next 5, 10, and 30 years, respectively, yeah. what scenarios comes to your mind? Well. When we're thinking about the future, we always have to remember that most things will stay the same. The future will mostly look like today, even in 30 years. The roads are going to be the same roads. Maybe there's some slight differences what's on the road, but they'll be the same roads. Civilization is accumulative. The old things don't usually go away. We usually add things on top. People still ride bicycles. They have electric cars and bicycles. The things that are different I think are going to be mostly in the world of not the material world of the city and the buildings, but in the immaterial world, in the world of ideas like AI, like um, our identity of who we are. Maybe we have a mirror world where we can have um, smart glasses and we can look at the world, the real world with a, a, a layer of um, the digital world. Um, again, the real world doesn't change that much, but we have an ability to change the world with these special glasses. I think we see that AR. in 30 years, AR. And what's going to change is most of our jobs, what we do, um, our identity, how we see ourselves and our relationship with other people, maybe where we're working. I think we're going to see even more remote working. Could you talk more about the augmented reality in some yeah. special way? Just give us an example of that, how it looks like. Right, so the augmented reality that I speak of, I sometimes call the mirror world. It's not where you put on glasses and you, you go to an imaginary world 
like a video game, like Starfield or something. That will happen, but that's not the important thing. It's where you have glasses and you see the real world. And the real world has another layer. So I can see a, maybe a virtual you. I, I, there's a couch and you are back in Beijing and here's your avatar sitting and we have a conversation. So do people in that digital twin world think in the same way as the authentic people? Yes, yeah, I mean, there will be, and they call it NCPs, there will be computer-generated people as well. Um, but the important thing is, is that that world is the same world that the robots see. It's just when you have a self-driving car going down the road, that's the world it sees. It sees that overlay of the digital plus the real world. So in a certain sense, there will be AIs and robots, and that's the same world that they have. So if we go into that world, we will see them and interact with them in that world. But most of the people, not most, I'm imagining a lot of the people that we interact with are going to be avatars, like of humans, who we want to meet, who we want to be around. I think well, even though there will be friends that are AIs, and people will talk to them, and there will be therapists who do AI, generally people will want to hang around with other humans. I mean, I think for a very long time, I, you know, maybe the next hundred years, humans are going to want to hang out with other humans. Who do you think will be the next star in China's technological field? The next big dominant company always comes from the outside. So there was IBM, and the, you couldn't compete against IBM. You always lost if you tried to make computers. But then Microsoft came along, and they weren't making computers. They were making software. So they became bigger than IBM. Then many people tried to compete against Microsoft, and they always lost until Google came along. And Google was a search engine. They weren't trying to do an OS like Microsoft. And then everybody competed against Google, uh, trying to make search engines, and they always lost until the social media companies came along. And so the thing I would say is that the person in China who is the next one is not going to come from Microsoft or Baidu or Tencent.